Namaste, yogis. Welcome. Thank you so much for watching. So for today's practice, as you see, we're going to work against the wall. You can have a bolster or a pillow. If you, like I have a big pillow and I tend to fold it, but if you don't have uh, something like that, you can have uh, two pillows, something that are just gonna help you to elevate your hips. So usually that's what we use the pillow for, or sometimes to place it under the tummy. And if you have high blood pressure or eye pressure, uh, heart condition or something that prevents you from going into an inversion, then um, we're gonna set ourselves against the wall, legs up the wall like we have done in the past. And basically it's the same thing I'm about to do. The only difference uh, right now is that I will put my prop under my hips. So if you have once again your pillow or pillows or a bolster, you can do that. Uh, also, if you don't have any of those things available and you would like some um, height, you can fold some blankets and have them so that your hips are a little bit higher than the rest of your body. But do ke uh, keep one blanket handy because uh, you can elevate your head, especially if you start feeling pressure on your eyes. So you're gonna go against the, uh, the mat, the, uh, the wall, at the, ed the end of the mat, just one end of the mat, and just scoop your body so you wanna be on the prop and uh, one hip on the prop and your hips back or your bum back on the wall. Extend your bottom arm towards the, uh, the mat and then when you are ready, you're gonna help yourself up. Now, once you are here, you can press your heels onto the uh, wall and lift your hips. And sometimes it feels better to have the prop a little bit higher towards the back and just make sure that whatever you pick, it feels all right. Then check in with your head. If it feels too much for you to have your head uh, to, the, to be the lowest point in this position, you can have a blanket once again and place it under the head. You can bring it just high enough so that you don't feel that pressure. Some of you will be able to get the buttocks against the wall once you are all set up. So sometimes you have to gracefully walk yourself into it. Gracefully, I'm just being uh, silly with that word, but uh, really it doesn't really matter how you get close onto the wall. Extend your legs, flex your feet, press the back of the legs towards the floor, whether you touch it or not, and then relax your toes and let them fall forward. If you have tendencies like rolling your knees out, your toes out, something that can help is to have your blank, uh, Dios mio, your, <laughs> your strap or your scarf, if you're, using, you're not having a uh, strap at home. And what you can do instead of wrapping your, um, your knees in this position, you know how we go into chair shavasana, and we get the knees wide. We can put this one against the thighs as well, but wrapping your thighs, not your knees. Uh, but instead of doing that, you can have the strap against the outer edges of your feet and have about fist distance or so between your big toes. And that will prevent your toes from starting doing something else. You're gonna keep the neutrality of your hips and then relax here and see if that works for you. Relax your hands by your sides, palms facing up. Do make any adjustments necessary so that there are necessary so that you feel very comfortable here. Or maybe as comfortable as you can get here. Relax your jaw, your face. And then once you found that place, start bringing the awareness to your feet. And see if you can allow your toes to relax. Relax your foot soles. Relax the top of your feet. Relax your heels, your ankles. Relax your lower legs. Think about your shins and your calves. Any sensations around the knees, the front, inner, outer edges, maybe it's the back of the knees. Just trying to relax the knees, soften the knees. So sometimes we keep tension here or pressing, just let them go. 
allow your thighs to be relaxed so you may squeeze them purposely and then let them go sometimes it takes awareness and just put some effort into this muscle so that they can relax finally same thing with your buttocks maybe squeeze your bum if you find that it's still working out and then let it go allow your hips to be heavy relax your back you're not having a deep arch on your lower back. Instead, your back is slouching towards the floor. You're rounding your back towards the floor. So do adjust your props so that you're not having that big back bend. Shoulders are heavy on the ground. Relax your neck. So even if you have a prop under your head, whether it is a blanket or a block, you want to make sure that your neck is relaxed and you're not hyperextending it. Let your shoulders and arms and hands be relaxed. Relax your fingers. Let them curl naturally into your palms. No tension, no effort, just relaxation. Relax your face and your jaw. And just for the next few moments, observe your breath. We're going to work with Dirga Pranayama. So inhale into your tummy. Exhale, let your tummy fall. Again, inhale. Exhale. Feel the rise of the belly as you inhale. And let your belly fall as you exhale. Rising into your tummy, into your side ribs, all the way up to your chest. Feel up to the top of your lungs. Exhale from the chest, empty your side ribs, and finally empty your belly. Again, inhale into your tummy, side ribs, all the way up to the top of the lungs, expand your chest, exhale chest, side ribs and belly. We'll take one more breath like this. And when you are ready, bring the awareness to your feet, your hands. Extend your arms out to the sides at a T position and flex your feet and press your legs against the wall and see if you can activate your feet. Your toes are um, spreading out if that works for you. Notice if both of your legs are touching the wall or maybe you feel the one leg is touching more than the other. Don't force it, just pay attention. So sometimes that shows you not just, we sometimes think that that's the length of the hamstrings, but sometimes can also show a rotation on the pelvis. So just notice, without uh, forcing the body into anything, bring your hands towards the sky and roll your shoulders down and into its socket. As you take your next inhalation, bring your arms out to the sides very, very slowly without touching the floor. You may stay a couple inches off the ground and when you're ready to exhale, very mindfully bring your hands up. Your legs and feet are active. Your hands face, but they don't touch. Inhale out to the sides, towards the floor without touching. 
exhale slowly up. Notice if both shoulder blades are working. Inhale. Exhale. Now you're going to bring your hands into claws. So curl your fingers and don't tense too much, but have your, uh, your claws firm. Inhale, bring your arms out and notice how that changes the engagement of your shoulders. Maybe it is easier for some of you to target the shoulder blades. When you exhale and your hands come up, imagine as if you had some balls of energy on your hands and put as much weight as you need into them. So you're going to create some resistance as your arms return up. Inhale, mindfully let your arms go out without touching the floor. Pay attention to the wings. And as you exhale, remember you are lifting some really cool energy in your hands and it weights as much as you need to, so you put that resistance. I will leave you to it. Breathe throughout it. Don't let your mind wander. Relax your face, relax your jaw. Make sure that you are not bringing the tension to the neck, especially if you know you have that tendency, watch it. The next time your arms go out to the sides, relax them on the floor, relax your feet, and observe. Relax your legs and your whole body. Watch your breath. Now, when you are ready, if you have a prop under your hips, bend your knees, bring your foot soles on the floor. Do not put any weight on your neck. The weight goes to your mid back. Lift your hips mindfully and put your prop out of the way. Slowly release your hips back down onto the floor. Extend your legs. And the same idea, you're going to keep your feet active. You can put your prop aside for now. Bring your hands by your hips, palms facing down. If the wall is um, it's in your way, don't worry. Just flex, um, not flex, extend your wrist so your uh, fingertips point up. Flex your feet, spread your toes. And as you take your next inhalation, bring your hands up. Keep the extension of the wrists and bring your fingertips towards the floor, like if you were trying to touch. Some of you might touch, that's okay. No goal, however, you can stay higher. On your next exhalation, bring your hands up and release again. 
all the way down to the floor. Inhale, bring yourself up. Keep the engagement of your wrists. And maybe, depending if you have any concerns going on on your wrist, your wrist might be the ones telling you how far your arms are going to go. Don't force them. Flexing doesn't have to look uh, a certain way, so you don't have to have a 90 degree angle um, extending. I mean, you don't have to really bend a lot here. So whatever your body allows you to. Meanwhile, your feet and your legs are active. See if you can feel your shoulder blades working. Last round. When you are ready, relax your hands by your sides, relax your feet, your legs. We're going to move slightly away from the wall and bend our knees at a 90 degree angle. Now, if you are working with a strap, you can bring the strap uh, in between your knees and have them so that they don't go wider than hip distance or fist distance. And just bring it higher, so about a fist distance between them. And then walk yourself back a little bit. So just so that you can have your 90 degree angle. So it's important that you don't go too far back or too close to the wall. And so just like if you were on chair Shavasana, look at your toes, make sure your toes have about that fist distance and your heels maybe be a little wider apart. Those are pointing up. Press yourself onto the floor if you can, scoop the tailbone, draw the navel down, and then relax and let your back be as close to the floor as it can be and that's fine. Bring your hands in front of your chest. We're gonna be working with a rest in our shoulders. Palms facing up. And as you inhale, push yourself, your arms up like if you were, um, like if you were lifting something heavy. Engage your arms, reach up, extend. As you exhale, fingertips point towards the wall. Curl them in towards your uh, palms into a soft fist. And when you exhale, keep the wrist in line with your shoulders as you pull your hands down, bringing your hands towards the shoulders. Like your T-Rex, like T-Rex, T-Rex arms. Now, as you inhale, flip your palms up, push up. You know how much resistance you create. Don't overdo it. You know how much you can extend your wrist. Don't overdo it. Fingertips forward. Curl them in. Feel the stretch and pull back down. And you create resistance once again, trying to bring the elbows towards the rib cage and your hands towards the shoulders. Inhale, push up. Find your rhythm. Exhale, fingertips forward, curl in and pull down. Don't let your mind wander. When your hands return to your shoulders, release, shake the tension off, rotate your wrist one way and the other. Relax your hands by your sides, palms facing up. Watch your breath.
when you are ready bring your hands by your sides and make sure that your rib cage stays grounded don't let it pop forward bring your hands towards the sky interlace your fingers draw your shoulders down and into it sockets keep your elbows extended and as you take your next inhalation bring your arms overhead without forcing your hands to touch the floor there is no goal of that and exhale bring your hands up find your rhythm breathe in arms up or back sorry and exhale back to starting position continue on your own while you do this at the base of your breath, you make sure that your mudra is firm, but you're not tensing your fingers so much. You also want to make sure that when your arms go overhead, you're not letting your spine help, so you're not letting it arch. Try to keep it as close to the floor as you can. Keep your feet and your legs relaxed, your glutes relaxed. Imagine as if your breath was the one moving your body. Your inhalation is the one moving your arms overhead. Your exhalation is the one pulling your arms back up to starting position. The next time your arms come up, relax them by your hand, by your sides, palms facing up. Now you want to make sure that your knees are not going wider. If you don't have a strap uh, around your thighs, you might place it now. We're gonna create a little bit of resistance with our legs. So moving our knees away from each other, pressing the foot soles against the wall, moving the toes towards us and spread them wide and then release. And we're gonna do that on the exhalation. Inhale here and exhale. Knees away, press your feet against the wall, lift the toes. You may press your navel towards the floor. Inhale, release. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, press four corners of the feet, the heels and the balls of the feet, inner and outer edges, the navel presses down and inhale, release. Continue on your own and every time you exhale, your knees move away from each other, your feet press against the wall, your toes are lifting and spreading maybe and you want to press the navel down without tilting your pelvis and inhale. Exhale, press. Notice how your feet are pressing against the wall. Here is where we also pay attention and we can 
check what our feet do when we walk, what are the tendencies, and exhale. Notice if it's easier for you to put the weight on the outer edges of your feet, the heels, the balls of the feet, can you distribute it evenly? What happens with the rest of your legs and glutes when you distribute the weight evenly on your feet? Perfect exercise to find your balance. Exhale. Move your knees away, press your feet. For those of you who are getting ready to go to golf again, and just to distribute your weight evenly on your body so you can get a better balance, better swing. I know nothing about golfing, so I'm just talking really. <laughs> so inhale into your tummy. And exhale, draw your navel down and pull your knees away. Press your feet against the wall. And exhale, release. Awesome. You may extend your legs against the wall if you like and observe. Notice your breath. Notice your energy. Notice your heartbeat. We're going to take advantage of the wall today. So from here, we're going to work more with our hips. So when you're ready, take the strap out of the way find your way onto a 90 degree angle once again for your knees extend your left leg and try to keep your thighs at the same level flex your foot and breathe you don't have to fully extend the leg just have your thighs even think about the flexion of that left foot spread your toes maybe breathe your arms can be by your sides but they're not gonna be helping. When you are ready, see if you can bring that, um, that ankle over the thigh. If that is a no for your foot, you can move your body farther away from the wall so that your right leg extends a little more and it softens um, more onto your foot. The other way to enter is you can extend your leg and bring your ankle without pressing your knee against the wall. Bring your ankle against the thigh and then bend your knee and have your heel at the level of your knee. Flex your left foot and push your knee away from the body and balance your hips, draw your navel uh, and your rib cage down. Now, as you take your next inhalation, push your knee away from you, that uh, left knee, and exhale, release. And we'll do it again. Inhale, press. And exhale, release. Three more at your own pace. See if your right foot can actively be pressing against the wall and notice how that changes the engagement of your glutes. The last one, you press your knee and breathe here. Press your right foot against the floor, at the wall, <laughs> and keep flexing the left foot. Balance your hips. Watch your breath. Rib cage down. Relax your jaw, relax your face. Are your hands trying to help your hips? or your legs, can you relax your hands? One more breath here. And then soften. Extend your leg once again. Keep your foot active. Breathe. And release. Awesome. We're going to enter the other side, extend your uh, right leg, flex your foot, and see if you can have your thighs parallel, maybe flex the foot. So although we're not moving yet, 
some of us might be already shaking, maybe your hip flexor is already talking to you, maybe it's your quad, you want to make sure that you engage the back of the leg, your quad so that your knees also protected, don't worry about fully extending. And so some of you will bring the foot right into it, my hips won't let me do that, so you can extend your legs and then bring your foot against the thigh, flex that foot, and when you are ready, you're gonna bend the left knee and bring your heel in line with your knee. Flexing through the right foot, pushing the knee away as you inhale and soften as you exhale. Four more breaths on your own and you hold the last one as you press. See if you can activate that left foot as well and press it against the wall. Four corners of your left foot press against the wall, outer edges, inner edges. So the balls of the feet and the heels. When you get to your last breath here on this, um, pressing your knee away, you're going to hold and breathe and keep pressing that left foot against the wall. Both feet are active. Notice if your hips are leaving the floor. Try to keep your hips on the ground. Don't use your hands to help the knee or the hip. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. When you are ready, soften, extend your leg once again, breathe, spread your toes. And when you're ready, bend your knee, rest your foot on the wall, maybe extend your legs, take a few moments, observe. We're gonna get a deeper uh, stretch here on the wall, and this is definitely up to you. If that felt good, whatever you were, if you want a deeper stretch, you can walk your hips towards the wall an inch or two, just moving yourself closer. Bring your left, um, your left ankle against the thigh, flex your foot, and then bend your right knee. So your leg is gonna be closer to you and you're gonna feel a deeper extension through your left glute. Left foot is active, right foot might be active, and depending on your hip, you might start bringing that right foot lower. So you can intensify the stretch by bringing the foot lower. Make sure that you are, um, you are able to flex the left foot. We're gonna take five breaths. And so find that stretch that works. So no need to be pushing your knee away from you on this one. We're actually going to get the stretch through the glute, but your foot needs to be active. Relax your hands by your sides, anywhere you want, you want it to be relaxed. See if you can press your tailbone onto the floor, how that changes the stretch. And when you are ready, after your last breath, you're gonna walk your foot up again, uncross your legs and observe. Other side, bring your ankle against the thigh Make sure it's not against the knee and that you're not pushing the knee against the wall. And flex the foot. When you're ready, bend the left knee. 
and once more keep the foot active you can press your knee away for a little bit just to uh, check in with the knee and then let go of the knee don't uh, of the hip don't keep pushing try to feel the extension and the stretch through the glute you'll feel one side more than the other you can bring your foot as low as uh, so that your heel matches your knee if that is not enough of a stretch some of you can go closer to the wall so that your your leg is even closer to you that can also be the case but make sure that you don't make that a goal press your tailbone onto the floor maybe we'll take one more breath here And very mindfully, we're going to start walking that left foot up to the wall again. And then uncross your legs and observe. Bend your knees, bring your foot soles on the wall. Allow your feet to fall to the side. Go into your feet out position. Take a few moments. Gonna take a moment here, don't come up too quickly. And very slowly and with control, bring your hands on uh, your top hand in front of your chest and push yourself up. And so from here, find your way onto your knees. You can have your blanket, if you had one under your uh, head, you can have that blanket under your um, knees, bring your toes all the way back to towards the floor, the wall. Haha, <laughs> here we go. Floor, wall, um, toes to the wall, blanket under the knees, sit back on your heels. If you need extra props under your uh, heels, please go for them. This is, you can have one blanket or two, or props, or blocks, whatever you have available under your seats if needed. And when you are ready, gonna hinge forward. Your knees can be about two fists, two fists distance apart. Those might be touching. Hinge forward, stack your fist, forehead down, breathe. Now at home, you're gonna be careful if there is high blood pressure, high pressure, heart condition, or just have a headache, sinuses are blocked. You don't need to do the next one. This is only if it feels right in your body, all right? So first of all, we're gonna go onto our tabletop position. And from tabletop, rest your elbows right where your hands were. Hug them, interlace your fingers, and draw your shoulders into its sockets. Now, push the mat away from you. Use your, um, press your fist, press your forearms away from you towards the floor. Hollow up your chest and your armpits. The back of the neck is an extension of the spine, so you are not letting the head just dangle here. Okay, shoulders into its sockets, press yourself down. And when you are ready, bring one leg at a time up towards, um, up towards the wall. And breathe. And when you are ready with control, one knee at a time, bring yourself down. You don't have to go too far. You can walk farther away from the wall, but we're gonna still try to use the wall. You can extend and push, and you can go really lower, maybe even lower. 
or you can go higher as we went on the first one. So try to find the one that works for you. And it can be just as to go maybe an inch off the wall. If you have your baseboard, you can go just above the baseboard. Dock your tailbone. Breathe. We'll take two breaths at a time and then rest your knees down. When you're ready, sit back on your heels. Forehead down, breathe. Notice your heartbeat, notice your breath. Perfect. Next one, bring your hands under the shoulders and come up onto your tabletop position. So you're going to go as far away from the wall as you need to. If you don't feel um, comfortable bringing your feet on the wall, go onto your regular plank and rest your toes on the ground. Those of you who are doing the wall, we're going to bring our feet up. And remember, the back of your head is in line with the spine. One more breath. And when you are ready, foot down, foot down, knees down. Sit back on your heels, stack your fist, forehead down. We're gonna start getting the body ready. So we're not doing it today, but we're gonna work into getting ourselves into an L shape against the wall. So 90 degree angles are really, really good. If that is a no for you going against the wall, well, when we get there, I will show you a different variation so that you can uh, still do that with your body, all right? So we're gonna curl the toes under. And come up onto your standing position, have your blanket aside, and still working against the wall. Have your heels against the wall. Relax your um, heels on the ground. Make sure the outer edges of your feet are parallel. Lift the toes and bring your body back. Draw the navel in, tuck your tailbone, bring your hands by your sides and breathe. See if you can put equal weight on left and right. Press your legs against the wall if that works for you. Keep moving your ribcage inwards. And when you're ready, bring your arms towards the sky and hold onto your left wrist. Roll your shoulders down and under and hinge towards your right. Keep your shoulders touching the, um, the wall if you can, both shoulders, both hips, and make sure that your toes are still not gripping. Press your legs against the wall. Move your head, yes and no. And find a place that works for you. Pull your shoulders into its sockets. Make sure they were not sending the hip towards the left. Next time you inhale with control, come back to center. Shoulders down. Exhale, hold onto your right wrist and side bend to your left. And once again, check in with your feet, maybe lift the toes, press your shoulders and hips against the wall. Remember the rib cage is not popping forward. Stretch your neck. Next time you inhale, with control, come back to center. 
And as you exhale, palms, your, uh, palms out, release your shoulders back and down, arms down, walk it out. Okay, that L shape that we're gonna be working on backwards, we're gonna do it up against the wall. So first of all, you want to have your hands almost in chaturanga arms. So my wall is kind of funky. Next time I think I'm gonna move our setting so that we can use the wall better. But you're gonna have the heels of the hands maybe at the level of your elbows. Shoulders back and down, draw your shoulder blades together. Now when you're ready, start walking back until your arms are extended, look down at your feet, and you wanna have one or two fist distance apart, heels are wider apart. Bend your knees a little bit, push the wall away from you, send your hips back and let your chest sink. So basically sideways, you're gonna bring your hands at the level of your uh, elbows, and then you're gonna push the wall away from you, walk your feet back, press your hands on the wall, send your tailbone up. You can draw um, the weight back to the heels, and we're gonna try to get our body into an L shape. And that might not work today, and we can bring the hands higher, or bend the knees more, that always does it. Draw your shoulders into its sockets, and some of us might be able to send the chest to closer to the, uh, to the floor. And that can be an intense stretch for your wrist, for your hands, and for your armpits, your shoulders, so don't overdo it. So we'll do one, take one more breath here. And when you are ready, you're gonna lift your chest and start walking towards the wall shoulders back and down and shake the tension off. Awesome, one balancing pose before we go back to the floor. You can go by the wall actually, now that we're doing the wall, let's just stay close. So maybe stay um, about a foot distance away from the wall, one foot or two feet away from the wall. Shoulders back and down, squeeze your bum. And when you're ready, bend the right knee and open out to the right. Now, you can bring your foot sole against the ankle, the inner side of your ankle, keep your toes on the floor. You can see here. Some of you might bring the foot right in front of the thigh. We've been working with this against the wall, so see if that works for you today. You don't have to. The thing here is you press your ankle against the thigh and your thigh against your ankle. Try to flex your foot. Put the weight evenly on your extending foot and bring your hands together, breathe. So whether you are here, you can keep your toes down, squeeze your bum in whichever version you have, ha, huh. or not. The one thing, you guys, you don't wanna put uh, your leg uh, or your ankle against the knee. That's a super no-no. Whether it is your foot, in, uh, your ankle in front or to the side. Always above or below the knee. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. With control, bring your knee up, extend your foot and release and shake the tension up. Squeeze your bum. Remember, we're by the wall if you need to stand on it. Squeeze your glutes, bring that uh, left foot either on the uh, ankle a little higher or in front of the thigh. Flex and press. Hands in namaste. Balance with your breath. If you're not so stable, you can bring your hands to the wall and help yourself. Try to stack your shoulders over the hips and if you feel safe, we go back onto namaste position. We'll take one more breath here. And when you're ready, inhale your knee up. Exhale, foot forward and down, and walk it out and shake the tension off. Awesome, going back down onto the floor for our cobra. So this time for cobra, we want to have ourselves into a butterfly position. So extend your legs wide apart towards uh, the other edges of the mat, as wide as your hips allow. Then bring your foot soles together, and then allow your uh, feet to move down towards the floor. So they may, may not, may or may not, not touch. 
Not important, just make sure that your pubic bone and your hip bones are balanced, whether they are touching the floor or not. You want to feel your pelvis balanced. So some people will touch, some people won't. Now when you're ready, bring your feet down, bring your hands by your rib cage, elbows in towards your body, forehead down, breathe. So we stay here for a few moments. Remember to check what works for your hips, for your knees. Now when you're ready, forehead, nose, chin, chest off the floor, lift. Lifting onto your cobra, maybe bring your gaze up if your shoulders allow. Maybe look back and maybe look from corner to corner. Little to no weight on the hands, if you can. Bring your gaze up, straight up, breathe. And when you're ready with control, chest, chin, nose, forehead down. Bring your hands by your hips, palms up, round your shoulders. You can keep your chin on the floor or your forehead on the floor. Bring your feet up, bring your knees to touch, and allow your feet to flare this time. Pubic bone and hip bones are balanced. If neck allows, we're going to stretch the neck by looking towards the right. Left temple on the floor. If that's a no no for your neck, forehead stays down. Gaze to the other side to balance your neck. Bring your feet together, forehead down to the floor, release your feet onto the ground, hands under the shoulders as you inhale, and exhale, push yourself up on your knees. Find your way onto your seated position. So you are welcome to sit uh, on your props if you like, and you can sit by the wall just to elevate your hips a little bit or to tilt your pelvis forward that you want to have your... Um, your hips and your shoulders, if possible, touching the wall. Cross-legged position. Remember your extra props. You can use them for uh, extra support. Bring the back of the head against the wall. Relax your shoulders back and down. And just notice here. We're going to bring our energy down. We were bringing all this energy to the top, and now we're going to bring it down. Mudra for that, Shingmaya uh, Mudra. So you want to bring your fist, close your hands into a fist, and then allow your thumbs and your index to touch. Bring your hands either to the creases of your legs or anywhere on your legs that feels right. Either way, you want to retract your shoulder blades, pull your shoulders down, press the back of the head against the wall and the crown of the head towards the ceiling. Press your seats towards the floor or your prop. Make sure your knees are happy here. And observe the breath. No need to change the breathing pattern, just observe it. The mudra will help you with the elongation of the apanic um, energy. So this is going to ground you. Bring all that energy back down. Rising as you inhale. Falling as you exhale, observe.
If you need to stay longer here, you're welcome to pause the video and continue to breathe. Otherwise, we'll take two more breaths here. And when you are ready, release your mudra. Find your way onto your back. So maybe your feet towards the wall. If you want to bring your legs up the wall once again, you are welcome to do that. Or you can go straight down onto Shavasana. Once we get onto Shavasana, remember that you want to get your body very grounded. So maybe bring your hands to the back of the neck. Interlace your fingers, lift your head slightly, and pass your hands right behind the head, and then rest the back of the head onto the floor. Notice the elongation of the neck. Although it's not touching the floor, you feel a nice traction on your cervical spine. Perfect. Now, when you're ready, you're gonna draw your shoulder blades together and under. You can pull your arms away from you as well to create space in your shoulders and then release, release your rib cage. Bend your knees, lift your hips, tuck your tailbone, and press your body down, release your hips. Extend your legs. Bring your right leg off the floor, press your heel away like if you were trying to touch the wall, and then release, relax your toes. Other leg, lift, flex your foot, and press your heel away from you, and then release. Let your toes relax, let your whole body relax. Watch your breath. And just notice your energy. It's okay to, in yoga they say, comparison is only a good thing when we are using it to grow our practice. Not with judgment, but with awareness of what was going on when you started the practice. How were you feeling? How was your breath compared to how it is now? Was it anything along the practice that you couldn't do? How did you feel about not doing it? Were you able to skip or were you forcing your body into doing stuff that you knew you couldn't do? This is where we grow. This is the Shavasana, the pause. Any pause along the, the practice is where we just start reflecting upon what our bodies gave us, what the mind did with that, and now we have a choice. And I invite you to let, let go of any frustration or anything, any, uh, any um, self-imposed limitation and in that, I don't mean that you should push yourself, but the opposite. When the body doesn't want or doesn't need to do something, it is okay just to let it go. You wanna breathe deeply, rising, and falling. Rising and falling. If you need more Shavasana time, remember you can always pause the video and stay for as long as you need. Otherwise, we'll take two more breaths together here, breathing in, breathing out. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Next time you inhale, wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, move your feet in your hands, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, maybe flex or point your feet, tight, 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 prune face, squeeze, and exhale, release. We'll do it again. 
stretch and dance and squeeze every muscle tight, tight, tight. Put on face. Exhale, release. Last one, make it count. Stretch and dance from toes to fists. Put all tensions and worries and sadness, frustrations, whatever that is, into your hands. Exhale, let it go. Notice your breath. Bend your knees, bring your foot soles on the floor and move on to your favorite side. We're going to take a few moments here. Checking in once again, scan your body from bottom to top. Check in with your breath. And we're going to use our top hand to mindfully help ourselves up onto our seated position. You can use your props to sit up tall. Any seated position that is comfortable will do. You can go against the wall again. Bring your hands together at the center of the heart, shoulders back and down. Relax your jaw, relax your face. And just pressing the crown of the head towards the ceiling, pressing your hips towards the floor. Let us take a breath together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Duom. Tuck your chin onto your chest and bring your eyes open. Bring your gaze forward, rub your hands together. Shower yourself with your good vibes all around you. Shake off all tensions, all worries, let it go. Thank you so much, have a wonderful day, namaste.